territory, a count after the knockdown. And now let's send it up to our ring announcer, David Diamante, for a main event. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, good evening and welcome to the Seneca Niagara Resort and Casino here in beautiful Niagara Falls, New York for the championship boxing on CBS Network's main event of the evening. Brought to you by Greg Cohen Promotions in association with Salida Promotions and David Schuster's Winner Take All Productions. Sponsored by Corona Extra, La Cerveza Masfina, and Maxim Group. Sound investments, solid relationships. This bout is sanctioned by the Seneca Nation of Indians Athletic Commission, Chairman Scott Snyder, Vice Chairman Justin Schaap, Regulatory Commissioner Kim Sumler, and the NABO, President Francisco Paco Barcarcel, and your supervisor ringside, Jerry Bolin. Your three judges scoring this contest from ringside will be Don Ackerman, Eric Marlinski, and Tom Schreck. And at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring will be Rich Pekosdi. And now, ladies and gentlemen, 10 rounds of boxing scheduled for the vacant NABO Heavyweight Championship. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, he wears the black with red and white trim. He weighed in at 229.6 pounds. His professional record, 12 victories against three defeats. He has two draws and nine wins coming by way of knockout. From Topeka, Kansas, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Nick Two Guns Guivas. Guivas. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. He wears the black and turquoise. He tipped the scales at already 283 pounds. His professional record, 16 victories, no defeats. He has one draw and 14 wins coming by way of knockout. He's ranked number 15 by the IBF, number 12 by the WBA, and ranked number 11 in the world by the WBO. He is the current NABA champion. Ladies and gentlemen, from Brooklyn, New York, Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Two seconds, mouthpiece in. Okay, gentlemen, you receive your instructions in the dressing room. Expect a clean bout out of both you, obey my commands at all times. Touch gloves now, go back to your corner, we'll get going. Look at the size difference. Jarrell Big Baby Miller is a mammoth of a man. He is the NABA heavyweight champion, looking to add the NABO title to his impressive resume. Nick Guivas, two guns. Boy, oh boy, he needs a full assault in order to derail Jarrell Miller. Yeah, this here physically looks like a matchup. Two guns, more like two water pistols against the bazooka. Uh, there's actually been talk of creating a super heavyweight division just for this reason. I'll, I'll say this for 283 guys. I don't know if you agree or disagree. I, I actually think Jarrell Miller actually wears it fairly well. Yes, he's a mammoth of a man, and he does not look uh, flabby around the abdominal region. He looks rather tight, and he looks fit, ready to go, and he told us that he's not going to let Nick Rivas off the hook whatsoever. Well, what I'd like to see out of him tonight is to show a little bit of his boxing skills early in the fight, use his jab. Let's see how he, his footwork is. He says he has the best footwork in boxing, but it is an area that he's had to work on uh, from the transition from kickboxing. And let's see what he looks like in those departments, because we know he's big and we know he can punch. When get into that kickboxing background, he actually took a head kick from Mirko Krokop, who back in the day was an unbelievable fighter in combat sports. And he went on the road a lot to challenge a lot of top kickboxers. So he claims that fighting anybody is no sweat off his back because he's already been there, done that, Steve. No, the one thing, he has a natural fighting instinct. He's very comfortable in that ring. And unlike a lot of American heavyweights who are athletes first, boxers second, this guy's actually a natural combat athlete. But I see him at 283. While it doesn't look that bad, you take a look at the ability to strike quickly and have some quickness. I think you've already seen he looks a little bit ponderous in there tonight. 
Well, he also claimed that the goal is to get to, you know, 260. That is his ideal weight. But one thing that he did inform us is he didn't like the fact of he was trying to cut weight and, and get to a quicker, you know, 265, 270. He claimed that he got to 277, and he needed to go and get an IV because he was drained and he needed to come back up. So that weight cutting wasn't going too well, but so far it has been so good against Nick Rivas with about a minute to go in the fight in the round. Ray was at this point last year, right around 12, 13 months ago at this very same venue, he blew out XL Holmes in one round. He actually weighed just 255 for that fight. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure why he put on all this extra poundage in the subsequent months and year. Jerome Miller is with his jab. Grievous is staying on the outside as he wanted to, but there's a clubbing right hand. Oh, oh by a body, body shot. shot. Putting down Nick Grievous, and he goes back to the corner, does big baby. Richard Bracosi counting, and that hurt him, that left hook underneath the right arm to the rib cage, and we heard that thought over here and now big baby going for the kill and he really didn't even put that much on that left hook and a right hand putting down nick guivas as jarrell miller right on the ear of guivas guivas is going to rise to his feet could he be saved by the ball no i'm not talking about zach morris and mario lopez that is the end of the first round. Steve, let's take a look at some of the work from Jarrell Big Baby Miller. Well, we take a look at the obvious advantage in size and strength and also just overall ability. And you can see right now Big Baby Miller digging a left hook to the body and down goes Guivas. That's the first of two knockdowns and to end the round, overhand right. And that right there's probably an accumulation of blows as Nick Guivas starting to figure out. He's not in Kansas anymore. No, he's not in Patrick. It seemed like that sort of uh, messed with the equilibrium of Nick Weavis. Yeah, you know, he's just not at the same level of uh, Big Baby. And Big Baby really didn't even put that much on that left hook, and he dropped it. You know, Thurman Thomas was a tremendous running back back in the day with the Buffalo Bills, and he ran a lot. And Nick Weavis has got to run in order to sort of preserve it and get some rounds along with throwing the jab. Well, I think the issue was with Weavis. You know, quite frankly, matched up physically, Weavis looks like a very pudgy cruiserweight. Uh, it's not only just the difference in size, though, it's also the difference in talent. You get the sense that Big Baby Miller could probably end this fight at any time he wants. I, I agree. I think he was actually taking it, you know, at a very slow pace and an easy pace, and he wasn't even really digging those body punches that hard, as hard as he could. Well, what I like about Jarrell Miller is everything is coming off the jab. I mean, he really sticks his jab out there and extends. No, Ray, you're right. See, there's a technical command that he has. He actually looks like a fighter. He's just not a big guy. Go for that, man! He's got and there's another body shot that sends down Guivas. And Guivas in trouble again, and he's got to be thinking, how much more do I have to take of this as Richard Procosdi counting as Guivas is going to rise to his feet oh. as he beats the count. Barely. <laughs> and big baby Miller is going to go in to try to get a big knockout victory. Now we're seeing some theatrics here as he digs right to the body with the left hook and Jarrell Miller darting inside. Now he's feeling real good about himself. A body shot attacking Nick Rivas and Pagosti telling him to keep it up. And now that's a veteran to Nick Rivas. He's saying that it was that he was hit low. Well, Maybe he's buying himself some time. Ray, quite frankly, I think what he's doing is staving off the execution. Simply put, Big Baby Miller is simply too big, too strong, and too skilled for two guns. Well, if you're Nick Rivas, you've got to be wondering, Patrick, I have got to find a way to maneuver around every inch of this ring. Yeah, there's really no way he can do it. He doesn't have the foot speed, the hand speed, the skill. I said it's like the film The Revenant, and that's when DiCaprio gets mauled by a bear, and that's what's happening to Cuevas. The end might be near as Jarrell Miller looking to put the NABL championship around his waist, digging to the body left hook, and this one could be over. Richard Pocosti waves it up, and there is Big Baby with the second round stoppage over Nick Cuevas. That was a one-sided demolition compliments of the man they call Big Baby. Well, this was a physical mismatch going in, and then it was a mismatch of a fight. The one thing we have to 
think about. He did what he was supposed to tonight. Jarrell Miller at 283. How does he stack up against the much bigger, better heavyweights like Tyson Fury, Anthony Joshua, Deontay Wilder? As we take a look at some of the action uh, from this past fight here, even Louis Ortiz, Povetkin, Parker, Ruiz. Against Guivas, he was able to just walk right through to the front door and just knock on the doorbell at any time because there was not a lot of resistance and the obvious size difference. But I, I think the key for Miller against some of these other heavyweights, these blue chip marquee guys, is to be able to close distance and be able to dig left hooks to the body like that. But again, Patrick, can he do it at 283? Well, you know, that's hard to say. I mean, he looked a little slow afoot in this, but you really can't tell by this fight uh, whether he's good at this weight. Sometimes, you know, weight, if it's good weight, it's okay. If you're still quick and big, it, it's okay. And time will tell. It is Big Baby right, Miller who improves his record to 17 and one with 15 big. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Rich Picosi calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, one minute and 26 seconds of round number two. Your winner by TKO, he's still undefeated, and he's the new NABO heavyweight champion from Brooklyn, New York, Joel Big Baby Miller. Jarrell Miller remaining undefeated as he adds the NABO championship along with the NABA championship. Patrick, he continues to rise up the world rankings. Yeah, he, he mowed right through uh, Cuevas. And I think it's, for him, it's going back to the gym, working on his jab, working on his footwork, and trying to improve in those areas. So when he gets in with the better fighters, he can show he has the skills to go the distance if necessary. Yeah, absolutely, completely agree with you, Patrick. And we'll come back and have an opportunity to speak with Jarrell Big Baby Miller and close out what has been an eventful evening of boxing here in Niagara Falls. Back here in Niagara Falls, New York, at the Seneca Niagara Resort and Casino, Jarrell Big Baby Miller finishing off Nick Guivas. Patrick, we're going to take a look at some of the work by the Big Baby. Yeah, here he is. He's going to go down to the body, and right there, you knew this fight wasn't going to last very long. And he
he did a nice job continuing to pressure Nick Rivas, throwing an array of shots, and then just continuing to dig to the body, ripping shots, and there's that right hand followed by the left hook right underneath to the rib cage, and then Jarrell Miller sensing that the end could be near, mixing up the attack, the left hook, pointing down Nick Rivas, and there we see the victorious Jarrell Big Baby Miller remaining perfect. And now we'll send it up to our broadcast colleague. Here's Steve Kim with the victorious Jarrell Miller. Ray, thank you very much here with the big baby. Very simply, was it as easy as it looked? I mean, nothing is as easy as it looks sometimes. You know I mean? We get down to business real quick, Pops. Listen, nothing is easy as it's simple. It's always going to be work, man. You can't sleep on anybody. Anybody got lucky punch. He caught me with a couple shots, but, you know, I know that wakes me up, and I like that kind of stuff. Jarrell, I know you're penciled in for a fight at Rochester in August. After that, do you believe you're ready to go big game hunting in the heavyweight division? Well, let me, first, let me say all glory to God. You man, I want to thank all my family from Rochester, Brooklyn, Rhode Island, Connecticut that came down to come and support me. Everybody out in Florida, Luxury PR, Maria, Anthony, everybody out there. And, of course, listen, I want to give a big shout-out to my wife. She's somewhere over there. She's a big supporter. Been with me since my pro debut. I love her to death, man. Without her, man, us fighters, you know, we don't have that support system. We can't do it. But let's talk about the heavyweight division for a second. Yeah. And that's what you want to hear about. For you know, it's Incident that happened with Berman Stavron, right? Listen, boy, you lucky I ain't knock your doodle dreads off your head and stuff it down your throat. Well, see, we're here now. But Trevor Bryan, another heavyweight, you know Trevor Bryan, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Listen, he has to be the best slap boxer in the heavyweight division. Can't turn the punch over the crack of wall or nothing. But let's go to Vladimir Klitschko and Tyson Fury now. Listen, ain't nobody want to see a 12-round hump fest again. But listen, I gladly take the win of that fight if you dare call my name. And let's go to Pavetkin and, uh, 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 Pavetkin and Wilder. Listen, I can see it now. New York versus Alabama, North versus South. We can call it the Civil War. Ah, baby, see, I like this man. This guy like this stuff. But listen, though, he ain't from Alabama, though. We got to take the A L off Alabama and take the A's out, put a B. Okay, he a bum. He from bum town, and I'm going to knock your lights out. And I ain't forget about Anthony Joshua either. He talking all that smack about Brazil over there. Brazil ain't got no heart or no nuts. But I bet you won't talk to me like that. I'll make you swallow your goddamn teeth. Call my name. So there you have it. That's Darrell Miller. One day he'll open up. Ray, back to you. Well, he's a pretty shy guy, isn't he, Steve? And Patrick, well, he is boisterous. He believes in himself, calling out Vermeer. It's the bird.